Ryan, that hurt. That hurt. It hurt my feelings. It's like cried. I cried. Are you kidding me? The entire production office was crying. The producers were crying. I heard one of the cameramen was crying. You made everybody Damn. cry with that one. Hey, I'm Ryan Ashley, and you guys just watched the latest episode of Ink Master. I'm sitting down now with the most recent artist to be eliminated, Anthony Michaels. Hey, Ant. Yo, what's up? Hey, we miss you here in New York. I miss you guys more. Like, I really do. It was so good seeing everybody. Honestly, you were one of the people I was looking most forward to see. Yeah, I was, I was really looking forward to it, too. Just life back here at home was waiting for me, and it, <laughs> it was not letting up. No, I get it. Let's get into it. Let's start talking about your journey all the way back to when you started competing, season seven. It was crazy. If I could put myself back there right now, uh, I would be just as excited, just as nervous. Didn't know what to expect, right? And I did everything I could to be present, just so I could not be in my head, um, so I could show up and try to remember as best as I can why I was there. I think you put it perfectly when you said, you know, you tried to just stay in the present because that's one of the hardest things to do in this competition. People get tripped up so much when they look too far forward or they fall too far back. It's staying mindful in that moment that really does carry you through the game. You came in season seven, you slayed all the way through the season, you took that title. Of course, as most Ink Master finales are, it was a little bit controversial towards the end. I thought your finale tattoo was spectacular. And then that win led you into your second round of competing, season 10, where you were a coach. What sort of different experience was actually coaching and how was that different from the first time you competed? So I got some insight as to what my aspirations were asking of me and I got to see right then and there like I was, I was being tested, right? So if you want to be impactful for tattoo artists, you want to be impactful in the art community, you want to be inspirational to people um, that struggle. Oh, well, let's see if you have what it takes to, <laughs> to be a leader in that sense. There was like parenting involved, um, right? Trying to manage different personalities and trying to connect with each and every artist on my team to help them become better, not only as people, but as artists in that competition. Given your knowledge of the weight of this whole thing, because it does, Ink Master holds a lot of weight. It changes lots of lives. How did you feel then getting that call to come back a third time? You've won the title, you've been that coach and mentor. It's changed so much about you. What were the feelings that you had coming in? Oh man, when I got the call, <laughs> I, 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 that's, that's what I did. I started laughing, right? And right away, I was a little boy opening that gift that you always wanted for Christmas. How did it feel coming in and facing all of these other artists. You know, day one, you guys come in as the masters. You guys are it. You've won this title. You are the definition of what an Ink Master is. Walking back into that Ink Master studio, all the cameras, all of the lights, and some heavy hitters this season. What was that feeling like? It was fucking scary. So I was starting all over again. The indecisiveness that I had with, with certain challenges even showed me like, yo, like that's what told me to lean into that choice that I made to, to represent myself and be okay with whatever f happens. I had to make a choice to just drop the armor, drop the f tough guy, f drop all that and just and just be who I am. And it was, it was f scary. I mean, did you feel like you were coming in, you know, totally alone? Because I know you've had experience previously with DJ, um, with Steve, you guys were all coaches together on season 10, which I'm sure bonds you in some sort of way. So did you feel like you had a little bit of a built-in um, like support group with those guys once you got here? Man, hell yeah. I, I, and you know what? I was, I, I, res I respect Steve and DJ. And I finally got to, you know, formally meet Tony. But I, f I found myself, again, ears and heart wide open. So anything those guys had to say, right? And, and replaying their experiences here, replaying our experiences as coaches, studying their work. I have respect for, for my environment and my surroundings. That was a game changer. That really helped. Because walking in, like I said, as winners and everything that we've been through, and these other hungry artists, like trying to be where we were at, 
We had the biggest targets on our back, you know what I mean? And this is a competition. One thing that was crazy to me about, you know, watching you compete this season was during the color portrait challenge, you told me that you were colorblind during color portrait day. That is wild. Um, how do you think that tidbit of information has affected not only, you know, that specific challenge, but your career as a tattooer? Coming out of that color portrait challenge and seeing that I was off by a, a slight color choice that intuitively was correct the first time. For me personally, something happened visually, right? From seeing certain colors in my brain that is, is exponentially helping me. I'm hitting the ground running again, right? I've stripped everything down and I, I'm, I'm studying all over again. It's one thing to say that you want that challenge because you're aware of the outcome. It's a completely different thing to actually want to face your fears, face the challenges, possibly fail over and over and over again, vulnerably to, to get to get there. Two completely different worlds, but it's given me the strength to do that. Having to go through that, you know, knowing that you have that condition, did you go through that challenge, trusting your intuition, going with your gut, doing what you know, or did anybody help you along the way, give you some advice? Intuitively, I, I stayed where I was comfortable. Right, darker skin tone on the canvas. I noticed a darker complexion on the reference. So right away, there was less, significantly less colors I had to worry about, right? Super strategic. I will admit my vulnerability and my strength and my vulnerability did run out because I found myself reluctant to, to ask. I wanted to go to DJ and ask about colors who I am as a person, I also didn't want to take DJ away from his prep and his process. So I was like, you know what? Let me break this down. Let me read some labels, right, of, <laughs> of these colors and implement my understanding of warming colors and cooling colors down and just simplify this thing as much as I can. In retrospect, do I wish I would have leaned on someone a little more? A little bit. But now I'm like, I, had I done that, I wouldn't understand it the way I do now. Totally. Right? Because he helped me figure it out. And now that I'm back at home, I'll just have someone else help me figure it yeah. out. No. I'm just going to, like, expect other people to pull me out of some for the rest of my life. Can't do that. So I know that, like, your studio at home, the entire atmosphere that you've created for yourself is very zen, um, very welcoming, very compatible with just ensuring that your canvases are going to have an amazing, fulfilling, enlightening experience. So in this competition, coming back in, I can't imagine a more polar opposite situation than that zen. The Ink Master House is all about, like, you get in, right? You have these challenges, you're under a time frame, you're competing, it's it's serious. Let's talk about the juxtaposition a little bit of that and how exactly do you switch gears between these two alternate realities that, that you juggle? So how I found myself balancing those two or being able to transition is remembering that I am the common denominator. And then coming into this competition and not being able to neutralize people's emotions as they walk into our stations and into Ink Master itself, I'm the common denominator, right? So then going back to our previous talk topic about connecting, that's why I have to do what I have to do to connect, right? Even when I'm having a hard day, if I don't connect, I'm not going to be able to, in, in that six hour window even heal myself on that day with whatever I'm struggling with because in those connections we find community we find grounding we find similarity which then gives us comfort which then our guard comes down now we're receptive and now together we can achieve the common goal you came for a tattoo I came to tattoo you want the best tattoo of the day I want the best tattoo of the day. when I'm freaking out trying to figure out what you guys are gonna ask us to tattoo I have to somehow remember to calm down because I need to connect, right? If I was at home, we're connecting the second you walk in the door and then you meet me and then it's just like, we're at a resort, right? Every, everything, it, it, couldn't be, it couldn't be any more perfect. And so an Ink Master in that juxtaposition is just like, okay, and you're the one that created that. You give people these experiences. You don't have the shop, 
but you are the one that designed that. So bring that experience through you in this moment in this station. I mean, it's it's obvious, you know, by your character, the way you conduct yourself, how vulnerable you allow yourself to be. You know, everything about you is so authentic and, and I feel like has a meaning and a reason. So going into this last tattoo, when you chose the dragon, right? That has to have a significant amount of importance and meaning to you. And so I wanna know from you, how did you feel about going into that dragon tattoo and then going into the elimination with that thing that meant so much and having things turn out the way that they did? It was a big deal, very, very personal. Um, so for a few years, I've, I've had this idea of breaking the rules in, in Japanese tattooing. And it's something I'm still learning. I'm very passionate about Japanese tattooing. I have a lot of respect for it. I've always had this idea of a white dragon. My idea behind it, while still trying to be respectful to the culture and, the, and its meanings, was really for positivity and strength. And so, again, I'm, I'm in this competition. It's Ink Master. You don't you don't want to gamble right now, right? <laughs> you want to listen to what's asked and you want to deliver it in your translation as, as best and as clean as possible. You don't you don't want to take any, any risks. But then I'm not being true to myself, right? Because part of being true to myself is taking that risk and now connecting with the canvas. As I'm trying to figure out what this Japanese subject matter is going to be, intuitively I go there. And it's just like, bro, you just did a dragon in season seven someone else did a dragon in this competition like you've got to do something else again it's like okay are you tattooing for the competition or are you tattooing for you and and the canvas connected with my canvas and she had been waiting years to get a dragon tattoo was not confident in pursuing that because she hadn't found an artist in her opinion that she felt comfortable with with doing a dragon and so i had two options Right, and I had a dragon, I had a snake with flowers. <clears throat> we talked about it, we talked more about her story, more of the stuff that she's been through. And when we talked about the dragon, she was a completely different woman. I mean, from the moment she walked in, there was so much hesitation and so much restriction physically to just be in the space. To see her leave, <laughs> I didn't recognize her. The experience alone, like I, I forgot that I was, I was competing on Ink Master. I really did because of what that tattoo, over the course of those twelve hours, was doing for her and how she endured it. So it, the, the choices I made in that tattoo were super risky, even down to the topicals that I was using to help her push through. Right? She, she, ninety percent of that thing, that was all her. And so the little, the least I can do is continue to provide that experience that I do at home and that comfort to minimize that stress. You know, I had to, you know, rub a little something on there to, to calm it down and to, you know, for her to not feel so much pain because she's, she's done enough, especially emotionally. That really altered the, the visual, right? Um, and so my understanding of Japanese tattooing, going back to bare bones traditional, in my studies and from what I was taught with my mentors, white was not used, right? And so in the entire dragon, I used my lightest wash and a little bit of, of my mid wash. But because of, of the topicals I use, it just, it didn't present well. And that's a risk that I took. Am I here for the title? Am I here for the competition? Yeah, of course. But who I really am, you, like, I, I, I want you to see this through. And then seeing what happened on the fly, I went and added some white in there, right? And so that's where I take risks just in, in a different way, you know? Um, I, I can't say in season seven that I would have taken those same risks, you know? And then maybe that's why things worked out that way. This shit right here, like, I look, I, <laughs> okay, I get it, right? I'm waving the white flag, I get it. But what I do know is that what I attempted to stand for and what I did for each and every person I tattooed I'll take that. And it hurt. It, 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 it hurt. It hurt bad. I know that my intention and what that tattoo was about can never be undone. The 250, the title, all the accolades, that's going to continue to come. I didn't get it this time, right? I'm human. I made choices. You got to live with those choices that we make and do our best to just 
<laughs> to see the silver lining. You know, for me at least, there were a few eliminations that were harder than others on, on me for different reasons, you know? And I know you say you're an empath and you feel everyone's emotions, but I also think you exude emotion as well and you can affect a room. You being so raw and vulnerable in that moment, in that elimination, I think what you did for me in that moment is the same type of thing as some of your canvases do f for you, right? Your canvases remind you of why you do what you do and the impact that that has, right? Your canvases, you know, come to you with this story and this emotion that they need you to convey and it's a reminder to you, right, of how much this truly means. And in that moment, at that elimination, you know, when, when you truly were vulnerable, it reminded me of what Ink Master is from the other side of that judging table. It reminded me of what it means to be in that position and to feel those things and to bear your soul like that. And it's not just for the competition, especially in your case, it's for so many other reasons. I don't know, in that moment, I think that elimination, it did, it, it hit me on another level because it reminded me that I'm not just sitting up there judging tattoos, eliminating tattoos, you know? I'm judging a tattoo that was done for a reason, for a purpose on a person by an artist who has, you know, sacrificed so much time out of their lives and, and energy and raw vulnerability and emotion to, to be in that position that you were in. So thank you for the reminder of how deep this thing really runs, what it really means. It made me remember how this whole journey started for, for me. So I don't think you're just an empath. I do think you have the ability to affect a room like that with your vulnerability and, and inspire, Anthony. Did you find what you were looking for? And if so, how do you think this round of the competition is going to change your future? I don't know if I entirely found what I was looking for, but I, I kicked that f door open and now I, I see completely different. It's, it's that thing, right? We say we're doing this for ourselves. We say we're doing it to support ourselves. Now support yourself. Well, it's like I'm tattooing. I'm not thinking about 250. You guys ask, you guys ask us, give us $250,000. Well, yeah, of course. But like I'm tattooing somebody. This body belongs to someone. And we get lost in that. And so then the meaning and the intention and all of, all of the story, you, you're a tattooer. It's impossible to tell people's stories and dreams in a tattoo, it's almost impossible. So we need to simplify things. And so for me, that I, that's what I'm thinking about. And then you have to remember, time's up. It's gonna get judged. Damn, it's not a $250,000 tattoo. Ryan, that hurts. But guess what I found? I was still standing in that You know what I mean? I cried, I sat up and like, like I'm still there, like I didn't die as much as I thought it was gonna be that devastating. <laughs> I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I understand the competition. I knew it was coming. In a sense, I found it, but not in a completion sense. It's like, oh, I got it, I acquired it, cool, on to the next thing. It's just like, oh no, now it's really about to start. The support for yourself, you did it here, now continue to do it at home because each and every day it's still choice to support yourself. I'm excited to see what the future holds. And as always, thank you so much for the inspiration, for the reminder of what's truly important, and that I'm sending you all the love, all the positivity, and I wish you so much luck on your journey. Thank you so, so much. That, that means the world, Ryan. Really, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you guys for joining us today. Don't forget to check out the Ink Master YouTube page for everything Ink Master.